We identified 111 new cases of COVID-19 yesterday, and the provincial lab completed 11,979 tests. Sadly, there has been one death during this time period. The total number of COVID-19 deaths remains unchanged at 253, as one previously announced death has been removed from the total after it was determined to not be a death resulting from COVID-19. Losing a loved one to COVID-19 or for any other reason is heartbreaking, and I extend my sympathies to anyone grieving the loss of a loved one. Today, Alberta has 1,444 active cases. 41 people are in the hospital, including six in intensive care. As of today, the total number of Albertans who have recovered from the virus is 13,718. There have been 29 schools where an individual attended while infectious. So far, a total of 32 cases are linked to these schools. There are still three school outbreaks and Alberta Health Services is working closely with these schools to investigate any close contacts. I want to reinforce that these schools are not a risk to their communities and those still attending are not at greater risk of exposure. Anyone potentially exposed has been contacted and is self-isolating. We have also updated our outbreak list for all other settings. This now includes an outbreak on one unit at the Queen Elizabeth II Hospital in Grand Prairie with two cases. Testing and contact tracing is underway and the facility remains safe for patients and staff. We have heard questions from many groups, businesses, and especially music teachers and schools, asking if we have been looking at new evidence to update our guidance. These are activities that many Albertans have sorely missed. The arts play an important role in schools and in our emotional well-being, and the restrictions have been hard for many. We had originally severely limited indoor singing and use of wind instruments, as there was some evidence indicating that they may pose unique risks of transmitting COVID-19. After reviewing the spread of the virus and measures in place in other jurisdictions, we have seen emerging evidence that these activities can be done safely if rigorous and proper precautions are in place. We have therefore updated our approach to allow Albertans to enjoy these experiences safely while keeping measures in place to limit transmission. Updated guidelines are now posted online that allow limited band practices, singing and wind instrument concerts to occur, provided distancing, enhanced cleaning and other precautions are implemented. Choirs may begin again with maximum size limits and masking while singing. However, audience singing is still not allowed and congregational singing in faith settings is still discouraged. This is because it is easier to ensure that all guidance is rigorously and regularly applied with smaller groups while singing in a larger group without these same ongoing rigorous measures could lead to large transmission events. I want to stress that gathering limits have not changed and dance floors are still not allowed, as we cannot safely mitigate the risk of exposure with these activities. As we continue to learn more about transmission, we will update guidelines based on what the evidence tells us and how we see the virus spreading in Alberta. The, the question of class sizes is one that uh, Deputy Minister Corbold had taken before with that specific uh, question about as teachers are taken to or, or uh, reassigned to online classes. Sometimes those students that are in person uh, classes are, are put together. Uh, one of the important things, of course, in any context, uh, whether a school or anywhere else, is that uh, as much distancing as possible is maintained between students. Um, and also, of course, that other measures such as daily screening for symptoms, regular cleaning, hand washing, and all of those measures are in place. Uh, I know that uh, Deputy Minister Corbold has talked specifically about some of the things that they are doing with schools and school boards to address some of these concerns. Uh, so that question may also be something that he'd be able to provide additional information on. Um, and perhaps that's something that we can help follow up with the Ministry of Education to get more details. 
The process with respect to contact tracing in Alberta Health Services uh, and, and as you may know, uh, we had about a month ago been experiencing some challenges with the timelines on contact tracing. So when a positive test result became available, it was uh, in some circumstances, unfortunately, taking several days to complete that contact tracing and, and notify those individuals. That gap has been closed and I've been told by Alberta Health Services that contact tracing now is able to be completed the day that that test result is available. And of course, then the follow up with that close contacts uh, does happen as a high priority. So if there has been a particular individual case where it's been reported that there was a delay, that would be outside of their normal practice. Uh, and Alberta Health Services might be able to comment more on that. But the typical practice would be, again, that contact tracing uh, would happen within 24 hours of that lab result being available and anyone deemed to be a close contact would be notified as soon as possible uh, within, again, if not that 24-hour time period, then as soon as possible after that.